This is Dr. Tom Rosell. After 38 years of practice and almost a million patient visits, the Rosell Center for Healing knows what works and knows how you can take control of your health and wellness. My team of doctors practice 21st century integrative medicine. Whether you suffer from chronic pain and fatigue, allergies or headaches, we can help. Take charge of your health before it's too late. Make an appointment today. Call 703-698-7117 or visit online at rosellcare.com. Finding out the Affordable Care Act isn't so affordable that you can't keep your doctor or you have to pay an annual fee just to be a member of a practice? That preventive care really means take this pill for the rest of your life? I'm Dr. Tom Rosell, and one day I will show you how to take control of your health and avoid a lifetime of drugs and probable surgeries. Join me for Ageless Health 2014, a day that will change your life forever. For details and registration, visit agelesshealth2014.com or call 703-698-7117. Dr. Tom Rosell live right now on 105.9 FM and AM 630 WMAL. Welcome to Dr. Tom Rosell Live. This is Dr. Tom Rosell. Happy Labor Day weekend, everybody. Hope you're out enjoying the day. It's a beautiful one. We've actually had a beautiful weekend. So get out there and play a little bit after you listen to Dr. Tom Rosell Live. But actually, you can put it in your car. You can take it with your iPhones, and you can listen to me anywhere that, that you are. So we're here today. We're here today for you, as we are every Sunday at 12 noon, bringing you the most intimate and updated information on integrative care. And I've got a program today that I want to talk to you about facts, things that should irritate you. And unfortunately, some of us think that Big Brother has all of our interests at his closest place of the heart. And not so true when you understand that we're constantly being duped. You're the guys that are out there that are target of somebody's pocketbook. Yeah, that's right. I said that. You're you're there because they want to manipulate the playing field. So you'll go out and buy different potences, po- potions and make sure that you do certain procedures and, you know, the scare tactics go on. And think about the marketing. The marketing is never about what it's going to do for you relative to benefits. It's always about if you don't do this, you're going to die, right? Well, unfortunately, they understand marketing and they understand it well. And we're talking about healthcare fraud and healthcare fraud relative to the general playing field, but healthcare fraud relative to the pharmaceutical industries. Pharmaceutical fraud involves false claims, false advertising, manipulation, motivation, all those things that any physician or doctor that if they do, they get called in front of their their statutory boards, in front of their licensing boards. And there are many different ways of doing this, and we can call them schemes, if you want, that are used to defraud you in the healthcare system, but and they're particularly used by the pharmaceutical industry, big pharma. They include all kinds of things. If we wanted to talk about good manufacturing practices, they're generally called GMP, uh, and we can put violations next to that, off-labeling marketing, best price fraud, uh, CME fraud, Medicaid price reporting fraud, manufactured compound, uh, compound fraud. The list actually goes on. According to the Federal Bureau of Investigation, the FBI estimates that healthcare fraud costs you, the taxpayer, in excess of $70 billion a year. Seven, that's what the B, $70 billion. That's what it's costing you. Of this amount, about $3 billion was recovered by false claims. There's a drop in the bo- bucket. So they've got all these guys out there looking at you know, the investigation, their whistleblowers and so forth, but it's still... It's still just scratching the surface. So we're going to get into where this comes from because I want you to be aware. I want you to know what's happening. You need to ask questions. When your doctor says, take this drug for the rest of your life, that's the first sign that says something's wrong, that there has to be another way. Isn't there another way, dear doctor? Isn't there a way that you can, we can do something, I can change something, we we talked about how many doctors do you go to that just simply say, hey, listen, you know what? You're too fat. You need to lose weight. How about getting in and go for a walk? Quit drinking you know, the, the sodas that you drink all day and get rid of the M&Ms or the Hostess Twinkies or you know, all of those things that we shouldn't be putting in our body. My mantra, sugar, sodas, coffee, teas, fast food, fried foods, alcohol, gluten additives. You know, you, you know the drill, right? Well, so the bottom line is, is that there's so much of this out there. When I read, I'm constantly reading. I'm, I'm going through the literature because I'm not only lecturing to you and trying to teach you and trying to give you the information, but I have to do it professionally as well. And I'm all over the country and there isn't a day that goes by that I'm not getting some sort of inquiry. How can you say that? Fortunately, I've got 
tremendous amount of data and literature in front of me. And what I could say to those people who challenge that is, how can you say that? And what can you say about this? So, for example, there's a settlement right now. It's becoming more common to see false claims in in uh, you know the settlement advertising of Big Pharma. Here's the deal. You know, sometimes I wonder if they just part of the drug that you take, the cost of the drug. I wonder if they they set aside a piece of that because they know they're going to have to make a settlement. It's like the car industry. You know, they know they're going to have screw ups and they'd rather settle than have to go to court with you. Well, the truth of it is, yes, that's the deal. So most of these settlements have to do with violations and marketing of the drug. And, and the claims that they make, and also then we get into the side effects and we get into inappropriate treatment and standard of care and all of those things. Wikipedia, interesting website. Most of the time I don't like it because you can get in there and you can manipulate almost anything, but they've, they've got a, a, a bank of all kinds of data. So if you get in, you can look in Wikipedia and you can see the top 20 settlements that have to do with criminal activity and civil penalty, penalties and so forth. And... About 15 years ago, no, not even that, let's go about 12 years ago, the settlements then were about $20 billion in criminal and civil, civil penalties. Johnson & Johnson's settlement last year, last year, was closer to the number of $20 billion, about $1.5 billion a year. If that doesn't make your hair stand up and say, hey, what's going on? They're penalized, but you know what? It's a drop in a bucket for these people. They don't even flinch. When you look at the violations and the nature that the drug companies use in positioning their marketing, the tactics that they use and so forth, you're being duped. Listen, you know, there's an the annual sales of well over $330 billion and estimated marketing budgets of something in the neighborhood of $72 billion. That's what I said, $72 billion in marketing budgets. A few billion dollars here and there in fines is like not a big deal, right? It's like a drop in the bucket. So what do they care? You're the laboratory rat. You've heard me say that over and over and over again. You are the laboratory rat. So... We need to get into this thing and look at it. A new lawsuit that was recently initiated out in California, uh, in Orange County area near Santa Clara, may begin to make huge differences in how we all look at this thing and the, the end products. The suit is directed at nine manufacturers, nine, of opioids. Okay, so these are things that are going to kill, uh, kill pain. And drugs that have been and I'm going to use a direct line, over-marketed to the point that, and we're going to go back a couple of years, in 2009, there were more than twice as many deaths from prescription opioid overdoses, 15,597 than from cocaine or heroin. And together, they don't equal the people that are dying directly from opioid use. That's what I said. Think about what I just said to you, okay? We have all this money being spent to try to rein in cocaine and all this money trying to be uh, spent on reining in the illicit use of drugs because, God forbid, somebody's going to die. But here, a, ma a drug manufacturer, manufacturers, due to overdoses, 15,597 people died directly as a result of opioid usage. 15,597 opposed to 4,350 for cocaine and 3,278 for heroin. There's an imbalance there. Got it? Do you really get what I'm saying to you? 888-630-9625. 888-630-9625. Love to talk to you on this or anything else. If you're taking some medications, you want to know what the side effects are? You better ask because there's other ways of getting it done. What you have to understand is that the reason that this particular situation is so interesting. It's in the details of, uh, of recalling the how it was crafted, how it was put together. According to the lawsuit, and this, it's going over 20 years, two decades of uh, misrepresentation of the effectiveness of opioids. And in addition to that, they, they kind of trivialize, they put down and, you know, set aside the risk and the adverse outcomes, and they overstated the use, the superiority of the drug according to treatment. Now, that's not standard of care. That's BS. That's pulling a veil over your face. 
this stuff is deadly. And when your doctor says that you're going to go on these drugs, step back and ask the question, why, what's it going to do to me, what's the long-term effect, and do I have options? And if the doctor says arrogantly, no, you don't have any options, then that's the first thing that you should note and get out of that office and go find about five other opinions from not only the traditional arena but other people as well. The goal, according to the suit that was uh, was initiated, is very, very simple, straightforward. It's to expand the market for opioids from their FDA-approved use for cancer and for other end-of-life pain. Chronic pain patients, a much larger market consisting of 100 million people. That's one-third of the population, one-third. 100 million people that are suffering from chronic pain. Those are the people that we see in our office, and we don't use drugs. We don't use drugs. We use nutrients. We use manual manipulation. We use acupuncture. We use low-energy laser. We use dietary change. We use exercise. We use uh, strength training. And guess what? Guess what our results are? They're in excess resolution, in excess of 80%. That ain't bad. That's like a home run. But because you're being marketed to by Fifth Avenue Drug Pharmacopeia, you think that there's only one way to go. So the defendants in this lawsuit, the marketing efforts were said to be highly, highly persuasive. Their deceptive uh, messages basically tainted everything about what really could happen, and the information was twisted and, you know, kind of hid behind the, the curtain. Directly through, you know, public relations firms that they hire and spending, I mean, this is big money for these guys. It's just huge, 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 huge. They put, you know, every place you go, what, you go to the airports, you go see the magazines, you watch television, you see all these things. You know, going back to one of my favorite commercials years ago, you know, the Viagra commercial where the guy's in the backyard throwing the, the football through the tire and says, get back in the game today. Yeah, well, now we know that Viagra and Cialis and all its cousins have huge side effects and increasing the risk of all kinds of stuff, including prostate disease. It's unbelievable. Let's go to the phones just for a second. Tom, how can I help you, sir? Thank you for calling. Oh, yeah, I appreciate what you said. A couple of things concern me, uh, especially with the opioids, things like Percocet. I think those are over-prescribed by doctors. I've been treated a couple of times, and and they almost seem to be handing those out like candy. They do. And I think we should, I think we we normally believe that it is the doctors who would have done the research and and known. And then even things like, you know, Dr. Oz has a great show, but for a long time he was pushing these coffee extract pills for weight loss. Listen, uh, Dr. Oz is selling out. You don't want to get me started on him because, you know, he started out as as the cream to the cream of the the, the allopathic guy who is going to be the the natural crossover. And, exactly. You know, and, and when now he, they find out that the coffee extract it really is phony. No, and no it's work. Gar- it's garbage. But that's a you know that's a whole different subject. But he also te- you know told you that you know don't waste your money on organic foods because the conventional vegetables are just as good and have as much nutrient base. I mean, where does this? I mean, what drugs were is he taking when he makes those commentaries? Right. You know, so you're absolutely on on point. The, you know, this is the situation where, you know, pharma pharmaceutics are a big business. They're over the top. Overprescribing when a doctor says, here, take this. And, you know, if you listen to my program a couple of weeks ago and I started talking about that I was vindicated because of the FDA having to do a 180-degree reversal on their uh, position on taking aspirin. Aspirin kills people. It, dis- it causes the strokes. It causes heart disease. It causes erosion, permanent erosion, deterioration of the stomach and intestinal lining, so you end up with all kinds of diseases. This is the garbage. This is the crap that you see on a day-to-day basis and that we as consumers are subject to on a, on a, you know, a, a detrimental hit list. It's, it's awful. But we depend on doctors because when you pick up a prescription, you get two or three pages, hey, semi denial, semi explanation. Tom, let me tell you what market or how the drug education works. Okay, I've only got a couple seconds here. Yes. Walk, in, walk in front of a, a, a medical building in the summertime and see these really, really outrageously good-looking young salespeople going in with lunch for the docs. I mean, that is a mark. Doc, you know, we have a new drug. Take this. Here's some samples. Tom, I got to go. Thank you for your phone call. This is Dr. Tom Rosell.
Ageless health and wellness is your birthright, but for so many of you, it's an idea that's meant for someone else. Perhaps this is too familiar. Your energy is low, you suffer with health problems that just don't seem to go away, and even progress to something worse. Ask yourself right now, do you deserve a better life? This is Dr. Tom Rosell. You've heard me on Dr. Tom Rosell Live Sundays at 12 noon, but on October 18th, I invite you to join me live and a group of experts in health and wellness for Ageless Health 2014, proven tools to maximize your health at the Fairview Park Marriott Hotel in Falls Church. Registration is only $99 for a full day of health education and interactive learning. Register for two and save. Seating is limited. Call today for details to register at 703-698-7117. That's 703-698-7117. Or visit online at agelesshealth2014.com. That's agelesshealth2014.com. Welcome back. This is Dr. Tom Rizal. You're listening to Dr. Tom Rizal live in studio. 888-630-9625. That's 888-630-9625. Love to talk to you. Love to hear from you. It's a beautiful day outside. You should be enjoying the Labor Day holiday. A little extended break from all the, the typical wear and tear of our, our weeks. However, you need to uh, relax a little bit. But listen to me because I'm going to jack you up a little bit today. That is my obligation. <laughs> it's... Incredible to me, and over the years that I've been in practice, to watch the manipulation of the marketplace when it comes to drugs and different types of procedures and so forth. And as I said, I read all the time, and every once in a while, it gets my dander and other parts of my body going crazy because you are being so worked, so manipulated, so sold to, so veiled that you don't know what is what anymore. The health index in this country is number 17, number 17, and we spend 30 cents out of every dollar for health care. It's big business, my friends. We're talking about, you know, half of a trillion dollars a year almost in the expenditures in drugs. If you don't think that's a lot of money, think again. It's more than most of the economic incomes of of, uh, companies across, uh, across the globe. Pharmaceutical fraud leads the pace and involves activities that result from false claims to insurers and even programs like Medicare. The United States has the biggest dollar per capita spent on health care. It also has the most unsettling, fraudulent applications of this trade than any place else on the globe, except for some other places when you look into it that people are being used as guinea pigs, as test modules to find out whether something's going to work or not, and then you end up with, but that's a different story. We can talk about that later. But, you know, let's talk about things like a year ago, two years ago, there was a company by the name of GlaxoSmithKline, and they pleaded guilty to criminal charges and agreed to pay $3 billion in settlement, one of the largest health care fraud cases in the United States, and the largest payment by any drug company up front. Now, there's settlements that continue over a period of time. The settlement is related to the company's illegal promotion of prescription drugs. Okay? Illegal promotion. Now, that's the guideline. It's failure to report safety data. Bribing doctors, bribing doctors, so going to our, our first caller's uh, You know, we expect our doctors to know things, but they get bribed. And promoting medicines that they weren't licensed for. These drugs were in things that you know. Paxil, Wellbutrin, Advair, Lamictal, Zofran, and non-covered uses. They're saying use these things for, and these are not standard of care. Problem is, the side effects are things that will kill you. They'll take you out. There's tremendous amount of information that's there if you take the time to look for it. And that's the problem. We believe everything that we see. We believe everything that's printed. We see things on Facebook. We think, see things on twi- uh, Twitter. And we think, just because it's written, it has to be so. And then we all get into the, well, I didn't know that type of situation. Huge, huge settlements, but these guys, as I said earlier, are putting these things into the price of the drug that they're selling you because they know that they're going to have to pay up sooner than later. 
and it's like a car. You know, you buy a car, there's a piece in there that in case something breaks down in the car, you have an accident, somebody dies in the automobile, that the automotive company will pay that out. That's a no-brainer. They'd rather do that than go to court with you because they can settle at a much, much lower level. These guys are not being taken to task. I'll give you another one. We all know that mercury is toxic. They shut a school down if you break a thermometer anymore. They don't have the old mercury thermometers in school. Yet, most dentists still use silver fillings, which are 50% mercury. Guess where that stuff goes in your body, that toxic reaction? When they take those silver fillings out, by mandate, they have to get rid of them as a toxic waste. But they can put it into your body. And they're the only profession that can use it. You talk about false presentation, representation. Let me tell you something. If the American Dental Association came out and said, yes, we know that there's a problem, can you imagine the plethora of lawsuits that would ensue after that? That's why they don't do this. So slowly, as many dentists begin to realize that this stuff isn't so hot and can cause tremendous amount of damage and destruction to your body, it starts to go away. But nevertheless, you end up suffering. I had a, a patient some years ago. She was a very young girl. And I think at the time she came in the office, she was 19 or 20, been diagnosed with very progressive uh, MS. And we were doing everything that we can to help her. But here's the catch. Her father was a dentist. And when she was a kid, she'd go in his office and play with the mercury all day long, thinking that it was fun. It was directly related to her exposure. We're coming up to a break, and we're going to get into this a little bit more in depth. I'm sorry that I've got to give you the bad news, but it's my obligation to give you the bad news. We'll be right back. This is Dr. Tom Rosell. This is Dr. Tom Rosell, author of Ageless Health. Health is a do-it-yourself program. My book, now also available in audio version, is a step-by-step program of how to take control of your health and wellness without drugs or needless surgery. You have the capacity to change your health and level of well-being. Take control of your health today and order Health Is a Do-It-Yourself Program. For more information and to order, please visit agelesshealthbook.com. That's agelesshealthbook.com. Finding out the Affordable Care Act isn't so affordable that you can't keep your doctor or you have to pay an annual fee just to be a member of a practice? That preventive care really means take this pill for the rest of your life? I'm Dr. Tom Rosell, and one day I will show you how to take control of your health and avoid a lifetime of drugs and probable surgeries. Join me for Ageless Health 2014, a day that will change your life forever. For details and registration, visit agelesshealth2014.com or call 703-698-7117. Dr. Tom Rosell Live continues now on 105.9 FM and AM 630 WMAL. Welcome back. This is Dr. Tom Rosell. You're listening to Dr. Tom Rosell Live in studio on this beautiful Labor Day weekend. Hopefully you're enjoying it. You're going to get outside and maybe a picnic today. But meanwhile, listen to the program because I've got some very important information. We're talking about the manipulation of you by manufacturers of drugs, the things that they do to get you to, and your doctor to prescribe them, but get you to take them and feel badly if you don't. That's an unfortunate situation. uh, One of the things we brought out is a new lawsuit that was initiated in California, the counties uh, of Orange and Santa Clara, and may begin to make a difference in all this nonsense. This was specific. It was about opioid drugs, and we said earlier that, you know, people are dying from the overuse of these drugs, but particularly from opioids. matter of fact, 15,597 people, the suit states, have uh, were, were dead because of the overdoses, overdoses due to opioids, opposed to 4,350 for ca- uh, cocaine and 3,278 for heroin during the same time frame. So you add those up, and you've got somewhere in the neighborhood of 7,000 you know, 600 and change due to uh, illegal drugs, and you've got 15,597 due to a prescription drug due to overdose. Something wrong there, my friends. I mean, my brain says, wait a minute. I mean, we've got, we spend hundreds of millions of dollars, maybe billions of dollars in trying to fight illegal drugs across the country, over the border, and we have opioids that are killing double the number that cocaine and heroin do. Doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me, but, you know, I'm just saying. 888 Sally, how can I help you? Thank you for calling. Oh, hi. Good afternoon. I have a 
not it's quite a serious question, I believe. What causes your body and yet one's body in general, let's say when you're older, like seventies, eighties, to have a systolic the systolic in the seventies, eighties or nineties, uh, in general, what can what breakdown in your body causes that? I mean, if it's age, but there is a why to it, as okay. you've always taught us. Well, Sally, the, for, yeah. you, you got you have the numbers a little bit. You have the 70, 80, and 90s. Those are the diastolic. So here's how you remember it, okay? No, 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 no. Systolic. Oh. Sy- I'm talking, no, it's frightening. I'm talking systolic. The upper number is in the 70s, 80s, or 90s in an 80-year-old. Also, I should add, the medications are uh, as currently digoxin and... Um, Okay. I guess digoxin and right. coumadin. If, if your top pressure is that low, you're being either, one, over-medicated, and it's knocking it way down, and that's not good. As we get older, our, our top pressure, the systolic pressure, should be a little higher than usual. The guidelines right now, no one should be medicated unless their blood pressure is over 145. Everything else should be done before that. The lower pressure, so just so we have a distinguishing idea of what we're talking about, when you talk about blood pressure, and I'm making up numbers now, let's say it's 145 over 74, okay? The upper pressure is the pressure that the heart uh, has when it pumps blood into the vessels. The lower pressure is the pressure that remains in the vessels when the heart is at rest, okay? So that's the distinguishing feature between the two of them. So as we get older, blood pressure under most circumstances, unless somebody's working out and so forth, would go up just a little bit because of lack of activity, wrong dietary patterns, stress patterns over a period of time, and so forth. So that'll bring it up so the arteries get a little less flexible, so it takes a little bit more pressure to push through the arterial system. But an older person who has uh, a low blood pressure, and a, a low systolic pressure is if they're on medications like digoxin and so forth, they're being over-medicated. Secondly, if um, they're low and they're not on medication, then their stress level is so ridiculously high that it's the adrenal system, the fight-flight system, isn't working the way it's supposed to. Your adrenal system, your kidneys, uh, there's areas in the neck called the baroreceptors. There's areas in the lower portion of the brain, uh, at the vestibular portion of the brain, that control blood pressure. So you have to look at all of these things. Sometimes it's the inflexibility of the spine. Sometimes it's dietary patterns. Sometimes it's stress. Sometimes it's drugs. But those are the things that you look at, and you can get them down. A lot of times, just taking magnesium, if it's too high, will bring it down. Sometimes, if it's too low without medication, you have to you have to make sure that the kidney flow is uh, not too fast, or you're not on a diuretic that's not only uh, pulling the water out, but it's pulling things like potassium out, which is going to cause that kind of problem and and a tremendous amount of weakness and also put you in a heart failure at at some point. But an older person who has blood pressure at that level, it's dangerous. And What I wanted to say was that the person has a pacemaker and also has atrial fibrillation, which is why I presume the person is taking digoxin and Coumadin, yeah, I mean, Coumadin is rat poison. Nobody should be on, on Coumadin. It's, it's that warfare. Cause, would that cause very low blood pressure? No, it doesn't. It causes the blood to thin. That's why they give Coumadin. What about the digoxin? The digoxin will. That's one of the side effects. Well, and, what if it has to be taken for, I don't know, what the reason, is atrial fib or... Well, there's other, there's other things that be done. See, the whole idea is that the, what they're trying to do is regulate the heartbeat, and they're trying to keep the, the heart from clotting. Right. And so that's why they're giving the they're giving the Coumadin. But in my opinion, there's many other ways of doing that. If the patient if the patient has a pacemaker, then the pacemaker should be doing the job. Now the next piece is that, uh, that what they're doing is preventatively giving them something to thin the blood because they think that the heart is still going to misfire in that that pooling that as a result of the misfire in the heart is going to cause it to to clump to coagulate to, to clot. And that's what we're doing. But again, uh, you know, we work with the patient and their physician to use other methods to uh, to get that done. So you'd have to look at the patient individually. But once the pacemaker is in, you got a pacemaker. But that's the end of the the game. Now you got some. You have to support that system. Uh, there's many ways of doing that. There's many ways of support. Do, what do you do instead of digoxin? Again, you can. You have. To, it's the individual patient. You have to look at the nervous system and how it's working. You have to look at the electrical fields around it. You have to look at the dietary patterns of the patient. So you have to look at all of these things to 
uh, come up with what's appropriate for that individual patient. I don't know the patient. I don't know their history. I don't know their, their physical findings. But there are many approaches from acupuncture to herbal preparations to manual manipulation of the nerves that go to those areas. But you have to look at those things, Sally, individually based on the patient, their history, and their profile. Okay? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. You're welcome, Sally. Thank you for calling. 888-630-9625. 888-630-9625. Talking about the scams due to the drug companies. Bernice, always a pleasure. How can we help you today? Two questions. One's about cholesterol and red yeast rice, right. and how do you get somebody off of Percocet and lorazepam that's older, like 86? Now, it depends on you know what their problem is, and Percocet obviously is a, is a drug uh-huh. that is addictive, like any of the other narcotics. Uh-huh. Uh, it's uh, it's one you know that. <laughs> Percocet contains a, a combination of drugs. It's it's kind of a twofold thing. Uh-huh. It's got acetaminophen, which is an NSAID, a non steroidal anti inflammatory, and then it's got a very powerful drug called oxycodone. And that is an opioid, as you know. Okay, so oxycodone is the problem. Now, Percocet is used, in, by the way, some people it doesn't work at all, but it's used to uh, treat a very severe to moderate types of uh, chronic pain presentations. So you've got to look at the patient across the board. If uh, the patient is on other things, if they're if they're drinking, they're really causing themselves a major uh, potential problem. If they're on any kind of tranquilizers, uh, any kind of sedative of that nature, uh, first of all, oxycodone can cause all kinds of problems. It can slow down the breathing pattern, which is not good if the patient has any struggles going on there. Uh, if they've been on it for a long period of time, it is habit-forming, and it has to be taken off slowly, 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 and with medical guidance, somebody who understands the drug and can watch for the, you know, the, uh, the side effects. Um, if you're on Percocet uh, and you're taking acetaminophen, uh, in addition to that, you've got a problem. You're really increasing the risk. It can cause liver problems, uh, particularly cirrhosis. By the way, it's oh, wow. uh, it's it's an awful situation. Any of these any of these opioids uh, can do that. One of the the uh, the worst ones, by the way, is Tylenol. So if you're taking uh, Percocet in addition to Tylenol, you're really increasing the risk factor because the number one reason for liver failure, hospital admissions, emergency uh, admissions for liver failure, is Tylenol. And, you know, a lot of folks don't realize that, you know, these non-prescription drugs that are out there. But you can end up with, you know, going back to, uh, you know, to uh, Percocet, everything from uh, an inflammatory problem within the intestinal tract, uh, chronic diarrhea. You can end up, as we talked about, uh, liver problems, uh, uh, kidney disease. Uh, You need to make sure that you don't have any other problems. If you had a history of of trauma, concussions, that's one of the things that's in the, the news today. You know, on an ongoing basis, uh, Percocet or any opioid is not a good thing. Uh, it's, you know, oxycodone, as we know, remember the, the problems with Rush Limbaugh. He admitted that he was on a certain type of opioid narcotics. He had to go away, you know, to get off of them and to be able to stabilize his body. Uh, this is not one of the things that you take lightly. So what I'm saying to you, and I'm, I'm not hedging, is, is that it's got to be done very slowly. It's got to be done uh, with somebody who knows what they're doing, and the patient has to be supported for whatever reason that they're taking the the uh, Percocet and the opioid to begin with. Yeah. So otherwise, you know, if they're on pain and they get off the the drug, the pain's still there, but you got to do some some other things. So. Uh, Lorazepam also, and she's 87. Yeah, I mean the combination of the drugs are awful. So. Okay, and a friend of mine also uh, went to the doctor this week, and they t- he wanted to use red yeast rice to get his uh, cholesterol down, and the doctor told him, "Oh no, that's dangerous. You know, that's very dangerous." He gave him uh, Lova Statin, I think. Yeah, well, talk about danger. You know, given the given uh, a pharmaceutical uh, statin has all kinds of side effects, from liver damage to cancers and so forth. Uh, Red, uh, red rice yeast is a statin. It's just a natural statin. And it doesn't have the far-reaching side effects uh, that uh, the pharmaceutical-produced statins do. So it's, it's still a statin, but it, it's not as impactful. And you still have to take coenzyme Q10 with it to balance what it does to the body because it, it steals, it breaks down and causes a uh, depletion of coenzyme Q10. So those and are the they, things... They were taking CoQ10 um, for a few months, but 
it, it hasn't lowered the cholesterol enough, so I no, it won't. Do, no, so co CoQ10, CoQ10 will not lower the cholesterol. It's oh. it's used to increase the production of the mitochondria, the energy cell uh, within each one of the the tissues of our body. So. Uh, and any type of statin loses or causes that to break down. So uh, start with that. Uh, the statin's not a bad thing, uh, but you still have to watch the blood levels with it. It's just easier than the pharmaceutical grade. And it doesn't have the side effects of the potential liver damage and so forth. But, I mean, we can go on with that. Anyway, Bernice, okay. thank you very much. I appreciate the call. Richard, how can we help you? got a foot problem. Uh, yes, and I've... Uh... Uh, this has been uh, sustaining. I've had it for seven months, plantar fasciitis. I've, I've had an MRI, which shows no tears or breaks. I've gone to two podiatrists. I've had three cortisone shots. I've had six months of correction, six weeks of physical therapy. I've gone to a chiropractor. Uh, no positive results. Okay. Let me give you kind of some guidelines on it because we see it all the time. Uh, plantar fasciitis, so people know it as a fascia, is the covering of bone and muscle and ligaments and uh, everything that's in the body. And on the feet, it's no different. It's very hard connective tissue, and it protects and supports and suspends. So when you have a fasciitis, by definition, itis means inflammation, inflammatory reaction. And in that particular situation, because you're stepping on it, it's sore, it's painful. Now, so you have to understand the anatomy of the foot. The calf muscles, or what we affectionately call the gastroc, the gastrocnemius muscle, comes down and it comes down to a big uh, tendon, the Achilles tendon, wraps around the heel and goes into the foot. So you have that mechanism that you have to deal with. The front of the foot has a lot of different muscles as well that causes the foot to flex towards the body. Uh, the bones that are uh, situated there. You have two bones from the knee down. One's called the fibula. That's to the outside. You One's called the tibia, which is the bigger bone, and that's to the inside. And then they come down, and they well, they hit an area that makes up something called the uh, the 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 mortise, the ankle mortise, and then you have the heel bone, which is the calcaneal bone. The bone directly in front of that is the talus. So these things have to be balanced completely for the foot to have minimal stress and strain. What we find is one of the primary influencers of plantar fasciitis, although it's not exclusive, there are many, is the misfiring of the quadriceps, not the quadriceps, but the, uh, the calf muscle. And if you get in and you work that calf muscle and you work the muscles, you strip them out on the side of the leg going down into the, uh, into the ankle, you'll find areas that are very tender. And for all practical purposes, we'll call them trigger points, although they're not necessarily that. And you work those out and you get those to move. But a lot of this is initiated because of the, the proximal, the beginning portion of the smaller of the two long bones, the fibula, having been moved slightly out of position. And it usually what happens is it moves slightly backwards. And if you take that fibula and you move it forward and you tape it in that position and you fix those muscles, as we do in our, uh, especially in applied kinesiology, much plantar fasciitis goes away almost immediately. I mean, you can get the patient up and have them walk around it and you've got a 75% reduction. And But it's, again, that's one approach. There's other pieces of the puzzle that are associated with that. If it's one-sided, it's usually structural. If it's bilateral, it can be structural, but then you begin to think that it may be also biochemical, and you begin to check blood sugar reactions, inflammatory pathways, things of that nature. In our business, and especially that we have, uh, we look at every muscle having an internal reaction. So uh, each muscle re uh, relates to a different organ system and a different acupuncture circuit. Now, Richard, now your, point of, your point about the calf, I've had um, dry needling that's... Um, Richard, that, hold on uh, a second, okay? I agitated the trigger points in my calf. Okay, Richard, hang on two seconds. I've got to take a break. Uh, let me come right back after this. I'm not going to hang up on you. I want to talk about this a little bit more because you can be helped. Are you dental phobic? Do you neglect your dental health because of fear and anxiety? A beautiful smile begins with exceptional dental care, and you can trust in the expertise of soft-touch dental care and Dr. Michael Chung. 
Soft Touch Dental Care is unlike any dentist office you'll ever experience. Their warm and welcoming environment is designed to soothe fears and anxiety the moment you arrive, and they're especially pleased to pamper their honored guest patients. Dr. Michael Chung is a professional and leading expert in all areas of comprehensive dentistry, including cosmetic, sedation, neuromuscular, TMJ, and implant dentistry. Offering state-of-the-art technology, Dr. Chung can give you the smile of your dreams. Arrange for a complimentary consultation today with Dr. Michael Chung and experience the expertise that makes Dr. Michael Chung so unique. Call 703-319-6990. That's 703-319-6990. Or visit bestinsmile.com. That's bestinsmile.com. Welcome back. This is Dr. Tom Rizal. You're listening to Dr. Tom Rizal live in studio, bringing you the most intimate and up-to-date information on things that should really irritate you from time to time, like lawsuits that drug companies put money away to pay because they know they're going to get sued. And, you know, it's a huge industry. We're talking about hundreds of billions of dollars a year, and you're being duped from unnecessary utilization. And that's what they think. I have other opinions, but it, somewhere in the neighborhood of 70 to $80 billion a year that's coming out of your pocket unnecessarily, and they're killing you, as we talked about with opioids, where the, the deaths from opioid overdose is 15,597, opposed to the combined use of uh, cocaine and heroin and something in the neighborhood of about 7,000 and change. Not a good statistic. Richard, you still there? Yes, I am. Okay, sir, I only have a couple um, minutes, so let me, give you, let me give you some uh, indicators. First of all, uh, dry needling doesn't work anywhere near as well as acupuncture. Low-energy light laser will allow the muscles, when they're set for the prop- proper frequencies, to reset themselves. But you have to look at several things. Chiropractic care is useful if it's coming from the pelvic area, but you still have to manipulate that fibula, and you have to manipulate the ankle, and you have to let them set while you reset the capacity of the muscle to work properly. Properly. There's also a lot of indicators that where the upper first cervical vertebrae, if it moves forward bilaterally, and that will cause a torsion on the covering of the spinal cord all the way down, causing uh, an incredible effect on the plantar bases of the feet. So you have to look at all of those things. Richard, what I would tell you to do, because i, I got to cut it short, is send me a note at rosellecare.com, and I will give you, you know, five or six points that you need to do uh, or to check on, and if we can be of help from for you, sir, I'd be uh, love to do that for you. This program is like way too short. We need to make it far better than you know an hour's program. We got to go here for like two or three hours, and then you might get all your questions answered. But nevertheless, listen seriously. You know, I've got like four of you on the program, still sitting there waiting to be you know talked to, and I'm not going to get to you. It's just. One of those things. We're going to take uh, one more, and then we're going to go from there. Carrie, how can I help you? Yeah, hi. Um, I've got a, a bad rotator cuff from overuse, and uh, I can, uh, uh, on a good day, I can shoot a basketball, but I, I cannot throw a football or throw a baseball. Okay. Um, and uh, the, the bicep in that arm is just, just gone. Okay. Uh, first, well, first of all, that's not rotator cuff. And okay. okay, so the rotator cuff has to do with a lot of different uh, uh, mechanisms of the shoulder, but uh, your biceps is going to allow you to make a curl. Throwing uh, a ball or a baseball or a football has many different pieces to that mechanism. And okay. the shoulder has to be stable. The arm has to come back. You're throwing. You're going to contract your, your triceps. You will get a little bit of the supraspinatus, which is one of the prime movers in, in the rotator cuff. But what you have to look at first is simply this. First of all, uh, I've only got a minute. So how old are you? How old are you? Uh, 57. Okay, good. So have you had any injuries? Do you you have any neck pain or shoulder pain? Uh, I have shoulder pain on... uh Basically, in the in the trap near the uh, the inside of the scapula on the right side. Okay, so that tells me that part of your shoulder problem is coming from your neck, and okay. until you get the neck, the nerves that go into the shoulder fixed. See, think about it this way: you have these fibers going out into this, these muscles. They're coming from the spine. In this particular area, it's called the cervical brachial plexus, the lower portion of the neck. They allow your traps, they allow your shoulder muscles, your chest muscles to fire properly. If those nerves are irritated, if they're overstretched or they have any compression on it, uh, it's going to cause the muscles to be imbalanced and you're basically out of luck. 
Carrie, I'm sorry. We're coming up to the end of the program. I'd love to get into this to you because it's really easy to fix. We treat a lot of professional athletes uh, from many of the Redskins over the years to, you know, uh, the Wizards and so forth. Wish I could help you. We're here every Sunday, 12 noon. I'll see you next week. Bye. Finding out the Affordable Care Act isn't so affordable that you can't keep your doctor or you have to pay an annual fee just to be a member of a practice? That preventive care really means take this pill for the rest of your life? I'm Dr. Tom Rosell, and one day I will show you how to take control of your health and avoid a lifetime of drugs and probable surgeries. Join me for Ageless Health 2014, a day that will change your life forever. For details and registration, visit agelesshealth2014.com or call 703-698-7117. This is Dr. Tom Rosell. After 38 years of practice and almost a million patient visits, the Rosell Center for Healing knows what works and knows how you can take control of your health and wellness. My team of doctors practice 21st century integrative medicine. Whether you suffer from chronic pain and fatigue, allergies or headaches, we can help. Take charge of your health before it's too late. Make an appointment today. Call 703-698-7117 or visit online at rosellecare.com. Thank you.